get checked out completely, 100%, because once you make an agreement or go to trial and present your case to the jury, you don't get a second chance. If you've been injured in a car crash, how can you be sure you're getting all the compensation you deserve? Well, that's what we're going to find out right now as we Ask the Lawyer. Hi again, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with AskTheLawyers.com, and our guest is Mississippi attorney Merida Coxwell. I want to remind you, if you want to ask Merida questions about your specific situation, head over to AskTheLawyers.com. Click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer, and you can do that right there, and it doesn't cost anything to ask a question. Merida, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thank you for helping us out. You're welcome. Good to see you again, Rob. So uh, people probably figure on uh, a claim, an injury claim after an auto accident. I'm probably I can handle that on my own. I don't need an attorney. What's your advice? Are people generally equipped to handle these kind of things on their own? Well, I think I've said this before. And if you have no injury whatsoever mm -hmm. and you know that beyond any doubt, maybe that's true. But if you have an injury and you try to do it on your own, you're going to be going against insurance adjusters who are trained to save the company money. It's not like the internet where you can point and click. You're going to be dealing with seasoned adversaries. And we believe that if you have an injury, you do need a lawyer. Someone who, uh, on your side, who is seasoned, you've had a lot of experience with this sort of thing, Merida. What are some of the areas that people might not even think about that they could look for, uh, you know, for damages and that sort of thing that, that might, they would ever even, never even know to think about? Well, probably one of the, the largest is people forget about future medical expenses. They sometimes forget about, you know, expenses that don't crop up a lot, like if an ambulance took them to the hospital and they don't think of that as an expense. Of course, you've got a traumatic brain injury that can manifest itself real mildly and be very serious. Now, many people can get over traumatic brain injury, but some people do not. And I tell everyone, get checked out completely, 100%, because once you make an agreement or go to trial and present your case to the jury, you don't get a second chance. What about if somebody, their injuries mean they can't work or, or can't do the same job they were doing? What about lost uh, earning power? Is that something? That... Well, that's absolutely uh, a level of damage. And once again, that requires expert testimony. You know, you have to hire an economist to figure out what the person, this is oversimplified, but what the person would make over his lifetime, then the economist has to reduce how much they would have consumed because we consume our money by buying things every day. Uh, but that's very complicated and it's expert testimony and experts can disagree. So choosing the right attorney and choosing the right expert is very important in that area so you don't get cheated. Yeah, speaking of getting cheated, just so let's say there's an accident with injuries, let's even say serious injuries. Um, someone may think, who may not know better, Merida, may think, well, the insurance company if the policy for the other person is X number of dollars, they're going to offer me that X number of dollars. They're going to go to the limit on the policy. Is that what usually happens? Well, Rob, um, that's a big question. I'll try to make it very simple. <laughs> uh, we've had catastrophic cases where the person who caused the injury only had $25,000 in coverage. Uh, there are cases that tear the lawyer's soul to see that, but that's all there is. And if the person injured did not have a large uninsured motors coverage, yes, it can happen where the insurance company might say, here's the 25000 now go away. Mm -hmm. But if you're injured by a corporation or a trucking company, you know, you've got to push for every fair and reasonable dime that you deserve because the way that the insurance companies save money is by paying small amounts on claims. And I'm guessing the initial offer that maybe the insurance company offers to someone who's injured, probably not going to be the highest offer or the highest amount they get. <laughs> I'm sorry about laughing, but we, uh, we had a case where we started the settlement process and our initial offer was $3 million and the insurance company's was 10000 Wow. So that case resolved for $2.3 million. But you see where they started. And that happens every time. And I think 
that's probably partially the answer to my next question, which is, uh, what if somebody says, Merida, I don't know if I can afford an attorney by the time I pay for attorney's fees, I, I may come out worse than if I had just handled it myself. Well, I don't, I don't know that we've ever had anybody come out worse if they handled it for themselves. I am confident, and of course, a client can look at it or a person can say, well, this is what you do for a living. This is what you know, you make your living off of, and that's partially true. But we have always gotten clients more money than they're ever going to get themselves by trying to deal with the insurance company. If we can't, then, you know, I've actually told a lady before, there's only $25,000 in insurance and you have a horrible injury. You don't need me. Now, maybe lawyers, other lawyers don't like to hear that and they think that's foolish of me to say, but being truthful and trustworthy is why we get a lot of business. Let's talk about that. Uh, if they're not sure if they need you, Merida, they're not sure if they have a case, do they, do they need to worry about how much it's going to cost to talk to you and find out if, if you think they have a case? No, we don't charge for initial conferences. Uh, most of those nowadays are done over the phone. It's amazing the number of people that would rather Zoom uh, or talk over the telephone. Right. COVID has kind of taught people that it's not necessary to come in now. We won't get started on a case, especially a serious case, until that client comes in. But we have no problems talking on the phone or talking by Zoom. And if you don't recover, do they still have to worry about paying? No, no. All these are done on a contingency fee. I imagine in the, our modern world, clients have probably Googled all these these issues and know as you know as much about hiring a lawyer as a lawyer can explain to them. But no, if we don't win, uh, the clients do not pay. And in some instances, um, some instances with some cases, we've had to, you know, cut the attorney's fees because the expenses ran so high. So, you know, our goal is to make sure the client's happy. Lots of great information as always, Marina. Thank you so much for making some time to answer our questions. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you. That's going to do it for this episode of Ask the Lawyer. My guest has been Mississippi Attorney Merida Coxwa. I do want to remind you, if you'd like to ask Merida questions about your specific situation, it's easy to do. Head over to asktholawyers.com. Click the button at the top of the page that says Ask a Lawyer, and uh, it'll walk you right through the process right there. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Rob Rosenthal with Ask the Lawyers.